Hey, good morning. Um, so I didn't have the patience to write a response, so I'm going to try to record a response um, to your Facebook comments. And um, so I feel like um, when I say I'm offended, um, I'm trying to appeal to the part of you that's human, that could um, understand that when I say I'm offended by your comments, as a human, maybe you might think that what you said could be interpreted as offensive. And for me, personally, that I, I don't want to offend people, okay? So like, and I don't know, that could be something that that maybe is not a concern of yours. And if it's not a concern of yours, um, I don't know exactly where to go with that because I think that it's so inherent in me. Um, so I guess I wanted to let you know that I do feel offended by your comments. Um, and I think there's no problem with me identifying my feelings and telling you how what your words, how your words um, are interpreted by me and how they make me feel because I think I think it's important to say. I think it's important, especially right now. Um, I think that I'm sure you don't intend to be offensive and maybe you don't care at all and that's okay. It's not okay. I don't think it's okay. But I understand that you have a certain way that you were raised and a certain set of experiences that have led you to where you are and that your experiences are different than mine. And especially as a white man, I completely understand how society has been structured historically to support the arguments that you're making. So I understand how you would have drawn those conclusions from all the experiences you've had and everything you've learned up to this point. Um, I happen to have slightly different experiences. So for me, this movement is, I don't want to be offended, offensive in saying that it feels personal because I am not a black woman or human. I'm a white woman. And I recognize that that comes with privilege and that I can't possibly ever understand. But things involving racism and social injustice really um, are important to me um, for a variety of reasons, but it's not about me. So I guess what I want to explain in this video um, are a couple things that you brought up in your comments. The first of which is that... Um, oh man, I should look at your comments. So the first thing you said is basically that you don't care if you're, you're offensive, which I've already responded to. Um, now you talk about all lives matter versus black lives matter. So basically I think, and oh, here's the other thing. You say you want to be logical and practical, and I understand that, but this movement is also about, it go, it supersedes logic. It is emotional, and it's sociopolitical, and a lot of it is based on, oh man, what is the word? Anecdotal evidence. And I'm not saying it's all anecdotal, because there are numbers. Like, you know, like, statistically, a black person is 2.5 times more likely to be killed by a police officer than a white person for committing the same crime. So there is, like, there are actual numbers to support these things. But it also has to do with the system um, that is referred to as, like, uh, or not, not the system, but, yeah, it is a system um, that we call systemic racism which is something that I think um, could be, if you're interested in learning, systemic racism is a great place to start because it might help you to understand the history of what's happening and why we are where we are. So like this, like you said, it didn't just pop up. Black Lives Matter didn't just pop up. Um, where it comes from 
is, you know, this whole history of inequality that has stemmed from um, the slaves that the white people used to build up this country for centuries. So, um, you know, Board, Brown versus Board of Education was less than 100 years ago. Um, it was like 60 years ago. So when my father was born, schools were segregated. When my grandmothers were born, hospitals were segregated. So she, she was literally, if she was in a hospital when she was born, she was, um, the blacks were in the basement and she, the whites were separate. Okay, so for our, and, and much worse around the world. So like around the world, within the past hundred years in the Congo, like black people were literally in cages. So the systemic racism is this idea that having a grandparent who was so discriminated against to the point where the social systems in which they lived um, prevented them from making progress like a white person would. So, for example, if your grandmother, if you're a black person and your grandmother was a slave or was discriminated against, if they didn't get uh, equal educational opportunities, equal housing opportunities, equal uh, financial opportunities, equal health, op you know, like medical opportunities, um, all those things can lead to uh, to, to poverty, to um, lack of the ability to move up this ladder in society that's like the American dream, you know? So it's like the opportunities I've had in my life. As a white woman, um, I am privileged. And so there are these things that I don't realize that it's like I have a golden ticket in life to get to things. If I walk in somewhere because I'm white and a woman, um, people cater to me. You know, like if I walk into a store and I have a problem with something and I ask to talk to the manager, I take for granted the manager is going to be white and they're going to listen to me as a white person more than they might if I were a black person because I have this like inherent privilege. So I go in and I'm complaining and bitching about something. <clears throat> they actually listen to me. That's like, it's like a golden pass that I got in my life that I'm unaware of all the time. It's one of the things about white privilege, which is another thing that I, um, recommend if you're interested learning about because it's something that inherently we don't realize is happening it's it's subliminal it's like this thing especially as a white person if you've never had to experience it we're completely unaware of it we're unaware of the fact when we get pulled over by a cop the stop only takes you know 15 minutes even if we do something illegal as opposed to 45 minutes which a black person would have to go through um so, and it, it's everything from little things, from if I'm walking at night in my neighborhood, no one's going to ask me where I'm going. They're going to make sure I want to get home safely because I'm me, because I'm a tiny little white, like, pretty attractive woman. Um, not to, like, boast of myself, but you know what I mean? Like, if there's a guy driving down the road, he's going to be like, hey, are you doing okay? He's going to offer to help. If I were a black man, that's how the cops get called. So, um... Okay, so we've covered like whites, white uh, privilege and systemic racism, which I think is a really important concept um, in this like social justice movement. Um, so the thing is that there's this interesting situation between the police and black people. Now, the police are risking their lives. Um, I also the, think that the police are pretty militarized and there needs to be a lot of police reform. Um, which looks like oversight. So the police should have, there should be checks and balances. That's how this country uh, moves. Services that don't require the police shouldn't call out the police. So if there's a fire, if there is um, a mental health issue, like we should be funding different groups to cover those issues rather than calling out the police on every issue because the police, the tools the police have are like a taser, a gun, handcuffs, like things that there's a very specific set of things that require that everything else uh there's an escalation that happens when a police officer is involved in another issue that doesn't require those things and anytime you give someone a gun and say hey you're in charge of everyone else there's like an ego that goes with that and and i'm not saying that 
beliefs lives don't matter but it's kind of like I know you're very critical of analogies which I would challenge you to think about that also because honestly an analogy is saying something is like something else it's drawing similarities between things like I don't need to get into an English lesson with you but it's saying it's like a simile <laughs> It's not a metaphor. It's like saying something is like something else, okay? And there are commonalities in what Cher posted, okay? There just, there are. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's, the point is that it's unhelpful and not productive when someone's saying, hey, this group needs help, this community needs help, for the devil's advocate to come in as like, someone who came in his passenger seat and be like, actually, everyone needs help. No, like, you know, people who have lung cancer don't get pissed off that breast cancer people have a month that's dedicated to them and the pink ribbons. Like, they don't get offended by that. It's like, everyone supports each other. And, I don't know, I thought it was a really good analogy um, in that comment. Obviously, you didn't, but... Um, I would challenge you to consider why you have that reaction to it. Like what things in your life, in your perspective, in your experiences have led you to draw that conclusion so quickly from something. And you know, it's amazing. You are a very articulate person and you have the ability to understand these concepts, but I think perhaps you haven't been exposed to them. And again, it totally makes sense that you haven't, you know, like if social justice doesn't apply to you, then maybe you have never been interested in learning about it. But I really would encourage you to learn about it because as a white man, you have a lot of power. As a white woman, I have a lot of power. And I don't know, for me, it's very important in my life if I see someone or something that's wrong, or something that is not fair, or something that's hurting someone, it's very important to me to speak up about it, and to defend those people, and to use whatever I have to try to alleviate the pain that someone else is going through. And so that is just built into me. Like, if I offend someone, I care. And I don't, there's, maybe there's no way to teach that. Like, I don't know what the solution to that is, but I do think that education is really important. And I think that right now, instead of trying to play devil's advocate, maybe just like learning about it. I don't know. And I, I don't mean to be offensive, but this is, this is like a big thing that there is a lot of information on and there are a lot of resources that are much more articulate than I am um, that you can access at your fingertips because we have social media and we have the internet. And hearing it for me is not, I'm not the one who should be talking about it. You know, like it's really important right now to hear from black voices. I've spent the past week every day just trying to only listen to black people talk about this because my story is often told by white people and I don't see the other side you know and I want to see the other side I want to be exposed I want to learn more I want to be educated um, so that I can have these conversations and so I think that if you're at all interested in that I highly encourage you like Tarana Burke is amazing um, Nicole Walters, um, you know, even Glennon Doyle's a white woman, but she's amazing also. There are so many people who um, are saying things, and I, I really encourage you to, to do some, some looking in, inward, because it's a very hard conversation to look at yourself in the mirror and go, okay, what inherent racism do I have built into me? What privilege do I have? How has society been structured in a way that supports me where it might not support other people? Um, I really encourage you to do that. And I don't know, I encourage you to care if you offend people. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
I hope everyone's well. And I don't know if you're going to watch all this because it's 15 minutes long, but I felt compelled. So, have a beautiful day.